Hi everybody, this is God Sad. Earlier today I was uh, exercising on the elliptical and I thought of a couple of stories that might link back to why the founders of postmodernism are all from France. The great Michel Foucault, Jacques Lacan, and Jacques Derrida. Tellement profond tellement intelligent, tellement intellectuel. In any case, uh, I thought I would share with you two stories. Now, don't get all angry if you are French. I'm, I learned French before I did English, so I'm more francophone in terms of my personal history than I am anglophone. So take it easy. It is important to once in a while uh, look at oneself in the mirror it's good for self-growth. So let's talk about highfalutin faux profundity in French culture. I'll share two quick personal anecdotes, and they will be laced with French, which, of course, will only make you infinitely more impressed with me, as if that were possible. Uh, and then I'll try to translate, uh, you know, where appropriate to do so. But remember, Barack Obama says Pakistan, so he's worldly. Other people who speak four languages, well, that's nothing. All right, so story one. Uh, back in the 80s, when I was working as a research assistant at uh, Groupe d'études et de recherche en analyse des décisions, which was a research center, an operations research, applied mathematics research center, uh, I met a French uh, student at the time, French from France. Remember, I'm, I live in Montreal, so Montreal is itself French. But here, when I'm referring to France or French, I'm referring to people from France. Uh, so I met a gentleman. I won't mention his name, but maybe he's watching. Maybe he'll remember this blast from the past. So uh, he approached me one day and said, uh, hey, do you want to go see? I mean, we were speaking in French. Do you want to go see a movie by such and such? a French film director, to which I responded, well, yeah, not sure about that because I'm not really into movies where we just see the morning dew on a flower for four hours. Uh, although I should mention that during my undergrad, I took a year-long course in French cinema that was actually very, very interesting. Uh, but generally speaking, there's the stereotype about international movies. And again, remember, that I'm fluent in French, I learned French before English, but there's all this pseudo-intellectual movies where, you know, you watch The Do and you see uh, 20 minutes of a shot of an abajour because it's representative of something. Uh, and so I'm not really into this full profundity. So I said, well, not sure if I want to go. He said, no, 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 you'd love this guy. He's, he's a great new, well, I'm, not, I'm not sure if he was new, but a, uh, an interesting director said, all right, let's go see this French movie. So we go see the movie, and then we leave. He goes, so, God, what do you think? <laughs> so I said, now I'm going to break out into French. I said, uh, mais tu sais, il n'y avait pas de dialogue dans ce film. But you know, there, were no, there was no dialogue in this movie. To which he responds in classic French style, Ah, mais tu n'as pas compris, Gad. Ce metteur en scène communique à travers le silence. You didn't understand, Gad, you know, because I'm this sort of idiotic, imbecilic North American. You didn't understand. This director communicates through silence. Ah, there you go. I don't have the intellectual profundity, the aesthetic acuity to understand this kind of French septième art. Uh, the second story is even funnier. Uh, now, if someone can actually find the clip, because I'm, I'm going here on 30 plus years ago memory. I think it was on a show called Bouillon de Culture, some of the biggest BS that you could imagine. Remember, I grew up in French culture. I'm from Lebanon. So I was fed this stuff in utero. Uh, 
so on one of these shows, there was, you know, they were sitting around a table. Typically, as you might expect, Michel Foucault, Jacques Derrida, and uh, Jacques Lacan to be around. And they were discussing la uh, signification des numéros, the, the, the significance of numbers, the, le symbolisme des numéros. I think it was Bouillon de Culture. I can't remember exactly. And so at one point, uh, the gentleman who's been brought because he's a symbologist of numbers, so now I'm going to break out in French. Ah, commençons par le 1. Le 1, c'est un numéro très important parce que Dieu pointa envers son peuple avec son doigt. Donc le, le 1 représente le divin. Let me translate. Ah, the number one. The number one is a very important number because God pointed to his people with his finger. And so one represents the divine. Then he moves on to number two. Ah, le deux. Le deux, c'est un numéro très important parce que le deux, c'est le premier numéro autre que le un qui divise. Et nous savons que la femme divise. Donc, le 2 <rire> représente le féminin. Uh, ah, number 2. Number 2 is the first divisor other than number 1 that can divide other numbers. And we know that women divide. And therefore, the number 2 represents the feminine, the femininity, female. So at that point, as I was trying to recover from the partial stroke of being engulfed but by endless pseudo-profound stupidity, I decided to flip the channel and head off to another uh, channel to watch, I think, maybe a full movie, I don't remember. And then I watch. I mean, for a very long time, this other movie, and then I flip back. And when I flip back, the first thing that I see, I hope I'm getting the story right, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty accurate. I hear the same gentleman say, Ah, le douze. <laughs> now, for those of you, I really do wish that you spoke French. So I watch a movie, I return to the pseudo profundity BS. And the guy is still speaking. And the, and what I catch him saying as I flip to that channel, ah, number 12. So in the time that I had watched this movie, he had gone from number two to number 12. That explains to you what the term illusion of explanatory profundity means. Don't fall prey to people's gibberish just because it sounds profound. Good thinkers are clear thinkers. Good thinkers are more often than not clear communicators. You don't have to couch things in very profound, unclear, fuzzy language while looking up into the sky thinking to be a deep thinker. I've met my share of some of the top intellectuals in the world, biggest psychologists, biggest behavioral scientists, uh, biggest in many fields. And most of the ones who really have something to say can say it without confusing you. A bientôt, mes amis. Cheers.